what would you do if you were tasked with spreading the 25.7 million people in Australia across the continent? In how many cities would you place them? How many regional settlements would you build? Where would you build wheat towns? Where would you build cotton towns? Where would the dairy towns be? What kind of harbors would you build across Australia? If you just imagine this, it's quite a difficult challenge. There's so many different routes you could have taken. And how many routes would have taken you to the Australia that we are living in today? where two thirds of the population cluster in just five cities. This is the highest concentration of a population in only five cities across the whole world. So we are super, super centralized. Is this the smart move or is it not? If you imagine yourself tasked with spreading the people across the country, maybe you would come up with a different solution. And if you imagine yourself back in 2010 standing in the CBD of Melbourne. And I was to tell you in 2010 that over the next 10 years, you will have to ensure to find a home for every single person from Adelaide to move into Melbourne. What would you have done? This is exactly the population growth in Melbourne that occurred over the last decade. One Adelaide to be thrown into Melbourne. Did we provide the right infrastructure to allow for this kind of growth? What this game is meant to do it is meant to encourage you to think in a proactive uh, way. Where should we put our next millions of people of population growth? Over the next 40 years, we'll add another 13 million people to Australia. Where should we add them? Should we just continue to centralize population growth? Or should we decentralize population growth where we don't just uh, add more and more people to Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Perth. Maybe we're spreading it out a bit more to regional centers. If this is our approach, what kind of infrastructure is needed? We need massive infrastructure investment, of course, in order to allow that the population growth isn't harmful to Australia, that we can actually provide better cities by adding people. Remind you, there's no reason that another 1.3 million people in Melbourne over the last decade is actually any kind of problem if we had built infrastructure at the same rate. That is the main issue that we're facing here. And I'm trying to encourage you to not you know, fall into the trap of complaining about population growth. You're of course free to do so. You're free to you know, say we shouldn't have a big Australia, but any kind of plausible scenario that I've ever seen about Australia will see us add around 300 to 400,000 net new people per year. If you actually accept this reality and you want to make Australia a better place, don't take the cheap and easy way out of just complaining how horrible this is. Think about how we need to reshape Australia. Same, of course, is the case uh, if you look at climate change. It's easy to say, ah, oh, we should make all those big macro changes in order to keep um, climate change away. Climate change will be happening. We need to adjust for it. We need to really rethink what kind of small settlements are, are you know, worth keeping up. How should we build out suburbia? Lots of suburbia. Western Sydney is way too hot, for example. We don't build even nearly enough street trees um, to make sure that the big, big, vast concrete stretches of Western Sydney stay cool in summer. We don't do this. And that is a big neglect on our end. And we must not be neglectful. We must be responsible thinking ahead. And in my column, you can read it. I'll post the link below. I'm trying to encourage you a bit to think about a proactive solution of how to make Australia, future Australia, a better place.